Hello and welcome to day one of our one week guided experience for how to make fighting fun and the making up even easier. I wanted to share this with you because I had the experience of having an epic year last year and while it brought some really incredible highs for me, I did a ton of traveling, I lived in Italy for a while, I visited about 14 different countries, it was an absolute dream in many ways, but in some ways it was actually really, really far from dreamy. Even though we were having these great times and we're having all of these incredible photo opportunities along our travels, the truth was that my man and I were fighting a lot behind the scenes. And for me, not only am I a psychotherapist, but I'm trained and specialized in relationship counseling. And so it was absolutely crazy making to me to find the extent that my own partner and I were getting stuck and really entrenched in conflict and unresolved conversations and misunderstanding. And at this time in my life, it really, it really just made me have to step back and go back to some of the basics of the things that I had learned during my training as a couples therapist but also to really look at some of those things that I really found to be most effective with the clients and the couples that I was working with in my private practice. And I had to just really walk my own self back through those steps again in my relationship. And I honestly feel like if I had not been able to do that, we quite possibly would have been going home on two different airplanes instead of really being able to come back hand in hand and feeling much stronger and much closer together. And what I want to offer you first and foremost is my idea is that we don't want to get rid of conflict because those are actually the couples that I feel most concerned about um, in my conversations with both clients and friends. Because if you're not having any conflict, then somebody is not being honest, either with themselves or with the other person. And the reality is we're going to disagree on things. We're going to have things that places where we get stuck in our relationship. So what I want to offer you is really some of the things that I found to be most helpful in getting unstuck so that we can actually start to have the conflicts that we need to have because the reality is there's times where we have to work things out, where we have to understand each other better and that doesn't always come easy. I think that's a bit of a myth that we're actually told by society that if somebody just loves us enough, then they're going to be able to love us in the way that we need them to do that. And I think that sets a lot of us up for frustration and puts us through the, to the track of breakups and divorce. In reality, I've come to believe that we really have to take responsibility for having the relationship that we want to have with our partners. And that means both doing our own work to understand really what we need and helping the other person to learn how to do that for us. So the first thing that I want to be walking you through today is <laughs> if you do nothing else but this, this is going to really change the way that you and your partner do conflict. I want you to make the goal of becoming battle buddies. I want you to think of this in terms of your primary objective here is not just to get through that one conflict that you're having with your partner. To, because if you are watching this, I'm going to be willing to bet that what you have noticed is it's almost like you end up having that same fight again and again and again. So maybe that's even the exact same topic that never really gets resolved. It just kind of keeps rearing its ugly head. Or whenever there is that moment that things get tense, 
it's almost really predictable of how this conversation is going to go. <laughs> and if you've ever found yourself almost thinking like, I don't even want to get into this because I know that this is not going to get me what I'm looking for here. I'm not going to be able to have the conversation that I want to have. Then I know you know exactly what I'm talking about. So the first thing I want you to walk away from this training with today is you need to change your goal. It is not getting through that fight, right? That fight you're having Saturday night or Tuesday morning. That's not your target. Your target is to use this time to really zoom the lens way back and reposition your focus from that one fight to looking at how you guys do every fight. Because what I found with the couples that I work with and also my own self we get into these cycles. We truly get into these cycles where it almost becomes a bit predictable in terms of how we're going to do this conflict dance with each other. And when we can look at it in terms of your goal right now is to not just have that fight of whatever it is that's bothered you most recently resolved, but to truly change the way that you guys do topic conflict together that's going to allow you guys to really work at this as a team. Whether he's doing this video training with you or she's doing this video training with you or not, this creates a totally different union and alliance on this. And I was talking to somebody the other day who had said, you know what, when things are good, my partner and I are fantastic. He really gets me. I know, you know, we really respect each other. We're tight. But when we get into these hot spots, it's like all of that kind of goes out the window. And I feel like we could get through this a bit better if we had the same goal. And I was so thrilled hearing this because that is exactly where you need to go. You need to have the conversation, right? Even if this is, even if your partner's not on a stage that they're really willing or able to have this conversation with you, you can start creating this change today on your own. The goal is not the battle. The goal is winning the war. And what I mean by that is really changing the way that you guys move through this cycle. Because what this often looks like is we get pulled into the weeds. And so now we have really two challenges in front of us. That initial thing that triggered the conflict and the fact that we don't get anywhere with this. So when you learn to do this well, this thing becomes a whole lot easier. If you don't have this piece figured out of how to really do conflict together, you're not gonna get through whatever that thing is that's made you angry. So start to really look at the questions that I want you to just get your notebook and look at right now. How does it typically go when you and your partner get into a tough conversation together? If I were watching your fight as if I was on a, fl a fly on your wall, what would I usually see happening? When you think back over the last number of conflicts that you've had, how do those typically go? Because I'm going to bet those are almost predictable steps that happen. And when you start to change your dance moves, the whole dynamic starts to shift. But first you have to get clear on what they are. So how does that cycle usually go? For most couples, what it often looks like is one person is pushing for conversation or resolution, and the other person is often trying to distance from the conflict and just keep it at arm's length and contain the situation. This might look like telling you what you want to hear, just agreeing with you, but you know that they don't totally agree with you. You, you know what's happening here. You're just being placated. Or it might look like as things get heightened, walk in the room or saying, I'm not going to have this conversation with you right now. And I want you to just kind of look at which one of those roles do you tend to play out most? Are you the one pushing for conversation or are you the one trying to lean out because the reality is and this is key the more that one of us is knocking on the door to try to resolve the issue 
the more the other person barricades that door. And I'm going to explain to you a little bit more next time about why that is. But for today, which one of these positions do you relate to more? Are you the person knocking on the door or the person barricading it? Because both of those positions have good intention. Neither one of them in and of themselves are bad or better than the other one. And I'll share with you a little bit more on that next time. But the first thing is just to look at what is a stance? Because this is often the war. This is often the gridlock. One person is knocking, one person is distancing. So this is what we're gonna to start to shift. So let me know, either comment on this or send me an email or even just write it down. Just get clear which one of these positions do you identify with, which one do you see as your partner? And I'll see you guys next time.